Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to implement a user registration form. The form will have five fields, email, password, confirm password, a mode of contact, which is either email or telephone as radio buttons, and then a phone number. For the validations, we will make sure email is required and of the right format. The password field is required and the confirm password should match the password field. The mode of contact again is required. The phone number field though has conditional validation. If the user selects email as mode of contact, then phone number is not a required field. If they select telephone as mode of contact though, phone number field is mandatory. Let's go back to VS Code and implement this registration form with the forming controls we have implemented. In the components folder, I'm going to create a new file called registrationform.js. Within the file, I'm going to use the snippet rfce to create a function component. Now, we can go about implementing the form one step at a time. Again, I will be going over the code at a relatively normal speed and only slow down if something is new. For our first step, we begin by making all the necessary imports. Let me quickly copy paste them. So we import formic and form components, the yup library and the formic control component. Next, we declare a constant, which are the options for the radio buttons. Let me copy paste it. This is an array of two objects. The first one has key is equal to email and value is email mode of contact. The second object has key equal to telephone and the value is telephone mode of contact. Next, we go about declaring the different props for the formic component. First, initial values. So const initial values is an object and we have five fields. All of them have an initial value of empty string. So email, password, confirm password, mode of contact, and finally phone. Next, we have the validation schema. We have a few rules, so I'm going to go over this a bit slower. Const validation schema is equal to yup.object and we specify the different rules. Email is going to be yup.string.email with the error message invalid email format and dot required and the error message is required. Next, we have validation for the password field, which is going to be yup dot string dot required with the message required. Next, we have the confirm password field. So confirm password has a validation Yup dot string dot one off and this accepts an array. We're going to specify yup dot ref referencing the password field or an empty value. And if this fails, the validation error message should be passwords must match and then dot required with the message required. We then have mode of contact, which is going to be a simple required string validation. So yup dot string dot required and the message is required. And finally, phone is going to be yup dot string and this is a conditional validation. So dot when mode of contact is telephone mode of contact then yep dot string dot required required let me go over these rules in a more understandable way 
So email field, we need it to be of email format and also required. Password field is just a required field. Confirm password field, on the other hand, we tell Yup that it is a string and its value can be one of two things. It can either be the value of the password field or it can be an empty string. And if this fails, we specify passwords must match as the error message. We also say that this field is a required field with required as the error message. We then have mode of contact, which is radio buttons. And this is going to be a required field. And finally, we have phone, which is a string. And because it has conditional validation, we say that when the mode of contact is telephone, then add a required validation to this phone number field. If not, the field is not mandatory. All right, now the last prop is the on submit method. So const on submit is equal to values. We simply log them to the console. Now that we have the props, our final step is to add the JSX. We are going to return the forming component. To this component, we pass in the three props that we have just defined. So initial values is going to be equal to initial values. Validation schema is going to be equal to validation schema. And finally, on submit is going to be equal to on submit. We then use the render props pattern. We get access to the formic props and we return the form component. Within the form component, we make use of our reusable formic component to render the different fields. We're going to format it. And since specifying the formic controls is something we have already done several times, I'm going to copy paste the code and then walk you through what each of the component is representing in the form. Our first form of control is the email form field. So we specify control equals input, type equals email, label is equal to email, and name is equal to email. Our second form field is the password field. So control again is input, but this time type is equal to password. Label remains password and name is also password. The next form of control is the confirm password form field. Now this again, control is equal to input because it's a text field. Type is going to remain password. Label is going to be confirm password and name is going to be confirm password. The fourth field we have is the mode of contact. Now this is a group of radio buttons. So control is equal to radio, label equals mode of contact, name is equal to mode of contact, and options is equal to options, which we have defined initially. The last form field is the phone number field. So control again is input, type is equal to text, label is equal to phone number, and name is equal to phone. We're going to end this form with a submit button. So type is equal to submit and it is going to be disabled if the form is not in a valid state. And that completes our registration form. Let's include this form in app.js and test it out in the browser. On page load, we have the form with the five fields and the submit button. I'm going to focus only on the new validation rules. For password, I enter ASD and for confirm password, I enter QWE. When I blur out from the field, you can see that we have the error message, passwords must match. If I clear out the confirm password field, the required validation kicks in. I'm going to select email as the mode of contact and then click inside the phone number field and click outside. No required validation message is displayed. If I select mode of contact as telephone, the phone number field is now required. Our conditional validation also works. If I fill in the details, 
and click on submit, all the values are logged in the console. A registration form works as expected. Alright, let's take a look at one more form so that we are really comfortable with this process. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.